In this presentation, I will talk about the periodontal therapy. To understand this video more, I advise you to watch the previous videos about the periodontal disease and the etiology of the periodontal disease. Guys, to treat any periodontal disease, we have seven steps that we should do. Partly or completely. The first step is the diagnosis and the treatment of emergencies which is also known as the preliminary phase then we do the non-surgical therapy then we do an evaluation to the non-surgical therapy then if we need it we will do the surgical therapy and definitive restorative therapy then we will do re-evaluation for all of that and then and finally we do the maintenance therapy or also known as the phase 4 therapy the first step is as I have said just now the diagnosis and the treatment of the emergencies which is also known as the preliminary phase in which we will take the history from the patient about his oral health measures smoking dental health medical health family diseases and drugs used we do the examination, clinical examination using the uh, inspection to see if there is an inflammation, uh, palpation to do the probing and measure the clinical attachment level and see if there is a periodontal disease or not, there is a pocket or not. And finally we do in uh, percussion to assess that periodontal disease too. Then we will do the di we, then we will use the diagnostic aids like the X-rays because they are the most significant things that we will use here because, as you know, uh, all the periodontium except for the gingiva are hidden, and we cannot see them uh, unless we will use the magical eyes of us, which are the X-rays. Uh, so that uh, after the history taking procedure, clinical examination and the use of the diagnostic aids, we will uh, make the definitive diagnosis about this uh, patient and his periodontium. Then we will treat the emergencies, for example the extraction of the hopeless teeth and abscess drainage if there is an abscess. This is the first step or the preliminary phase therapy of the periodontal disease. Then we should do the non-surgical therapy. In this phase, we will eliminate the dental plaque and the things that will enhance its presence. Besides, and most importantly, the patient's education. So that uh, in the non-surgical therapy, we will do the mechanical and chemical plaque control the mechanical plaque control includes the prophylaxis, uh, prophylaxis treatment and the scaling, polishing and root planing. The chemical plaque control includes the topical chemicals or the systemic chemicals. The topical chemicals, for example, chloroxidine, mouthwash and the chemical and the systemic chemicals which are the multiple drugs that we use in uh, periodontology but the most important ones are the tetracycline family okay and also to correct the plaque retentive factors for example the processes uh, the uh, restorative defects for example the overhangs and anything that will enhance the retention and uh, accumulation of the plaque and makes the removal of it more difficult after the completion of the mechanical and chemical plaque control we will uh, correct the occlusion if there is any malocclusion we should correct it and finally and most importantly most importantly guys in this phase is the patient's education which includes the motivation and instruction the motivation uh, about the importance of his periodontium that if he neglected it it might lead to the loss of his teeth and the 
bad effects on his overall health and instruction which includes the instruction about the correct uh, technique and frequency for the uh, doing of the toothbrushing and flossing procedures okay so that the non-surgical therapy after doing it we will evaluate what we have done we will check the presence of the inflammation we will check the presence of the clinical attachment loss by measuring the clinical attachment level guys the clinical attachment loss and the clinical attachment level are two names for one thing which is the amount of the junctional epithelial deepening below the uh, cemento enamel junction as you can see here, as you can see here in this picture the green uh, space is the uh, space between the uh, pocket bottom and the cemento enamel junction which is the clinical attachment level when we use it to do a diagnosis or clinical attachment loss when we use it to describe a disease after the evaluation we will have three ways either we will shift to the maintenance phase and the phase one therapy was enough and successful or we will need more phase one therapy if the patient has uh, huge accumulations of plaque and calculus we will need more than one visit to complete the non-surgical therapy or the third way which is to shift for the surgical therapy and that is when we have more than five millimeters uh, clinical attachment loss when we have more than five millimeters of clinical attachment loss guys believe me it is very difficult to do, do to do the um, uh, root planing and you should open a flap to do the correct root planing procedure in this uh, situation so that when you open the flap in the situation we are shifting to the surgical therapy that should be done and should be conducted by a specialist or a periodontist this is the surgical therapy the phase 2 therapy that as I have said before we shift to it when there is 5 millimeters clinical attachment loss or more guys you should know that not only uh, we do not only uh, shift to this uh, phase when there is a disease no it has three parts the surgical therapy in periodontology has a part that is concerned with the with the removal of the diseased periodontal tissues and a second part that is involved in the replacement of these diseased tissues and finally a part that is concerned with the replacement of the missing teeth which is called as an oral implantology uh, the part that is concerned with the removal of the uh, periodontal diseases is divided into three subdivisions the first subdivision is concerned with the removal of the soft tissue disease for example the suprabony pockets the suprabony periodontal abscesses or the gingival enlargements that uh, that are removed during the doing of two procedures which are the curettage procedure and or the gingivectomy procedure the second subdivision of the removal of the diseased periodontium is the removal of the heart tissue disease which includes the osseous resective surgeries uh, which include the both osteotomy or osteoplasty osteotomy is referring to the removal of the diseased bone that surrounds and supports the bone on the other hand the osteoplasty is indicated for the removal of the diseased bone or non-diseased bone but the removal of the of the bone that does not support the teeth the third and last subdivision of the 
removal of the diseased uh, periodontal tissues in the surgical uh, periodontology is the removal of the hard and soft tissues both of them for example when there is an infrabony pocket we will do the removal of the soft tissues and the hard tissues and that is done through uh, the distal wedge surgery the Woodman flap surgery the modified Woodman flap surgery and the envelope flap surgery which are actually a combination of the curettage gingivectomy and osseous resective surgeries okay and the second division of the uh, periodontal surgery which includes the replacement of the disease tissues and it is also subdivided into three categories category number one which includes the replacement of the soft tissues which are uh, which is done through the rotated flaps for example the laterally positioned flap the advanced flap for example the coronally positioned flap and the apically positioned flap and the free soft tissue grafts these four surgeries are used to replace the missing soft tissues the second subdivision of the replacement of the uh, periodontal surgeries is the replacement of the heart tissues and that is done through the different bone grafting surgeries the last and third subdivision of this category of the periodontal surgeries which is concerned with the replacement of both soft and hard tissues for example the guided tissue regeneration in which we will replace the missing bone and replace the soft tissues and in a correct and guided uh, procedure finally the last and third division of the surgical therapy or the periodontal surgeries which is the oral implantology that is concerned with the removal of, with the replacement of the uh, removed teeth okay so that as a summary the periodontal surgery is consisted of three parts the first part is concerned with the removal of the soft tissue disease heart tissue disease and both soft and heart tissue diseases the second part is concerned with the replacement of the soft tissues the heart tissues and both soft and heart tissues and the final and third part of the periodontal surgery that is the preoral implantology guys i want here to make it uh, clear the difference between the gingivectomy and the flap the, when I cut a part of the gingiva and remove it completely from the oral cavity it is called as gingivectomy like the Woodman flap surgery or the modified sorry modified uh, Woodman flap surgery on the other hand the flap is when I cut a part of the gingiva but keep some part of the gingiva attached to the original oral mucosa as you can see here in the uh, lower right picture the left picture is a gingivectomy the right picture is a flap okay so that now you will ask me that how can you call the modified woodman flap surgery as a gingivectomy guys i want you to know that the modified woodman flap surgery includes the formation of the flaps but then these flaps will be cut permanently from the oral cavity leading to the gingivectomy procedure okay um, and all of them are done by doing a cut that is called as an incision okay so that now we, we know the difference between the gingivectomy the flap and the incision terms in periodontology 
uh, after the completion of the uh, phase one therapy phase two therapy we will shift to the definitive restorative therapy or phase three therapy in which uh, we will put the definitive and final restorations in the patient's mouth for example the uh, final fixed dentures or removable dentures or complete dentures and after that we will do a re-evaluation for the response of the periodontium to the surgical therapy and to the restorative therapy that we have done and check the inflammation, plaque, calculus and the clinical attachment level uh, that is present in response to those therapies. Finally, after that re-evaluation, we will have two ways. Either we will need more surgical therapy or different or a different uh, definitive restorative therapy if the periodontial uh, response to them was not so good or it would be good and we will shift to the maintenance therapy which is the phase 4 therapy in this uh, maintenance therapy or the phase 4 therapy we will do the same for the uh, for the re-evaluation appointment but that is every six months okay guys that was the summary for the seven steps that we do in each periodontal uh, treatment plan or procedure for any periodontal disease Thank you for constructing the world by listening to this presentation. Always try to know, spread knowledge and construct the world. Be kind to others because life is not short but it is limited. And that is for the greatest benefit to the humankind.